Welcome to video number three of our van life series. So far we have flown to England to pick up our van that we bought on eBay. Drove it the 200 miles back down from Sheffield to Surrey and given you a little tour of what we have bought. Before I get into this video, if you are enjoying this series so far, please make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up for more like this. So you join us today as we do a few quick jobs to the van so we can get it all the way down to Spain. First job was getting some electricity. For us, solar power is the best option as we want to stay in remote places and plan to be where there is always lots of sun. We've bought two 100 watt flexible solar panels. Here you can see me testing them first to make sure they work before fitting them to the roof. And good news, they work. The panels are connected via the charge controller to four 110 amp hour AGM batteries, giving us 440 amp hours in total. I will go into more details on this setup in another video. With all the work done, we head for Dover. So now we are on the journey, we can show you a little preview of the work we have done. Mostly the work was around the electrical system, to make sure we had a fridge and therefore food for the journey, along with a really good clean of the inside of the van. But the main difference as you can see now, is the toilet room at the back of the van has been removed along with the cupboard that sat over the fridge. This makes it feel much more spacious and easier to see out the back while driving. The rest of the work included installing an inverter for the fridge in our laptops and fitting some parking sensors. We also added a split charge system so we can charge the batteries via the engine while the van is running if needed. We finally made it down to a very wet Dover that evening and spent our first night in the van next to the port. We woke the next morning to some lovely sunshine and headed for the ferry. <laughs> I read the most complicated instructions I've ever seen in my life to fit our headlight deflectors, then drove onto the ferry and said goodbye to England. later we arrived in Calais and started to enjoy the lovely open French roads. We had originally planned to start our van life journey exploring more of England and France but the plan changed and we ended up needing to get to Mallorca in just a few days. There was however one place we had to stop. Back on the road, and even in traffic, we remain positive thanks to the stunning views. And then by pure chance, we pulled in at this beautiful spot where we ended up staying the night. The next morning came, and that meant more driving through the beautiful French countryside. The stunning views of the French scenery kept us entertained and made the journey so relaxing, even in our noisy home on wheels. After bridges, mountains and more, we eventually crossed the border into Spain. Even with stopping to have some lunch, it didn't take us long to get to Barcelona. We avoided the toll roads and took the back roads, arriving in Barcelona at night. We woke up the next morning and ran to the water. It was cold, but worth it. Also, this was our first shower since we started the journey. Rest over, and we headed to the port to catch the ferry over to Palma. This time, we caught the night ferry. So we leave late at night from Barcelona and arrive just in time for sunrise in Mallorca. Yes. 
our 20 year old van made it all the way from London to Mallorca, over 1,100 miles, and she didn't miss a beat. So now we skip forward a few months. It's finally time to rip everything out and start with a blank canvas. We started by finally taking all the horrible carpet off the walls and ceiling. We then took all the water damaged wood off, which revealed all the insulation or lack of that was in the van. While emptying the van, we also started to run all the electrical cables and pipes that we would need later on. Then the old carpet from the floor came up revealing a floor that was actually in quite good condition. While I continued to pull up the floor, Alba got to work trying to find us the best prices for the appliances that we needed to buy. Then, before going out to buy everything we needed, we had to fill the empty van up with all the old rubbish that we couldn't reuse and take it to the dump. After some shopping around, we found that for the floor and the gas hob, Bauhaus were the cheapest for the style we wanted. And Leroy Merlin was the best and most practical for almost everything else we needed, like the sink, taps, fittings, wood for the walls and ceiling, and everything else. So this is going to come off of the sink and it's going to go like this. Yeah. I now need to go out and then back and down. down. So I need like another one. I'm going to need the Ideally the Stanley knife, if not, there's a pair of pliers in there. Do you want to go back and get the Stanley knife? Or not? The what? The pliers. This? No. no. So back to work, and the next job was to get the old fan out of the roof and fill in the hole to make sure it doesn't leak. We did end up getting the fan working. It was just really noisy and didn't seem to make any difference. So the decision was made to still remove it, as we'll be adding another extractor fan above the kitchen anyway. Plus this way, the solar panel will fit better on the roof. I honestly don't think I'd have been able to do any of this van build without Alba. Even if it's just little things like this, making a really tasty breakfast, it's these little things that make a huge difference. <laughs> breakfast over and we need to take out all the old insulation. Mostly because it only covers half the roof and also just because it looks like it's seen better days. With all the old insulation out, it's time to put the new insulation in. As we plan to be in hot and sunny places most of the time, we want the van to stay as cool as possible. From what we have read, this is almost impossible. But this loft style aluminium insulation is one of the best ways to stop the hot outside metal of the van acting like an oven and heating up the van inside. So this covers every bit of metal possible. It's also what we use to cover the windows and we know it makes a huge difference there. This was also a rare job that we could both do together and that was nice as I'll be honest normally I just like to get on and work with things on my own. But this job allowed Alba to cut the pieces out to size and then me to take them, spray the glue on and stick them in place. Oh man, this is going to be easy. Look at the size of that gap, I can put it in my hand. For the insulation on the roof, it was simply a case of tucking the insulation in behind the battens. It wasn't all this easy but we did manage to get the entire van covered. Once all the insulation was in, I started on the wood cladding. The first few pieces were the hardest to get in, plus I had to make sure that all the cables run behind the walls were run and secured in place. Okay, it feels like we're getting somewhere now. We've got both the walls done on each side. Bits in between the windows are done. All the insulation has been put in down the bottom. And same on the other side. And we've got cables and pipes for water, waste, and everything all in place and drilled through the holes in the bodywork. We've got one window completely painted black and then the insulation has gone in on top 
And then all we need for this window is the same insulation for the heat to go on top. And then we'll get a plasterboard or we'll get something over the top. And then that's going to be where the kitchen is. And we'll have a row of tiles in there. Um, all the rest of the insulation has already been cut for the ceiling, which is what I'm about to start now, because that's all we've got left to do with the wood. A little bit further along, and we've got the insulation in over the window that's going to be boarded up, and we've got half the roof done. After getting almost all the roof done, we had to stop as we ran out of wood. So we moved on to the kitchen so I could run all the pipes and cables to where they needed to be, and that way I could finish the wall behind the kitchen. This resulted in another late night of trying to get everything done, but it was worth it. The frame for the kitchen is in, so now we know where the sink and hob will be. I have all the pipes and connections coming through the wall behind the kitchen. The next morning came, and before it gets too hot outside, I wanted to get some of the repairs done to the outside of the van. As you will see in the next video, we will be painting the entire van, but before we do that, I had a lot of prep work to do, including fixing the rust and holes in the roof. Oh my goodness. You see much better. Wow. The only thing I need to do is wow, it looks so amazing. In, I just need to push and tweak and put some screws in to hold it perfectly in place. Well, and that's in place also. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so big, no? Back to the inside, and the kitchen countertops have been cut. The floor has also started to go in, as we decided in the end to put the floor under the kitchen unit. So today we have a small surprise. Alba's out, and I'm going to try and get all of the floor done while she's gone, so that she can be surprised when she gets back. So, so far, I'm just getting everything done this side of the kitchen, so that I can finish the kitchen unit. Um, the main reason I wanted to do this is to finish off uh, the wall and the countertop for the fridge, I need to connect it to the uh, frame of the sofa stroke bed. And to get the sofa in, I need to put the floor in here. And to put the floor here, I figure I might as well just try and finish off all of the floor at the back, and then it's done. So let's see if I can get it all done before she gets back. The floor we went for in the end was a vinyl laminate floor. It's really, really easy to fit. You literally just cut it to size and stick it down. The only thing you need to do is make sure that your floor is perfectly flat and level underneath before sticking it down, as we had a few holes in our floor that have later caused the vinyl to crack. Okay, update. I've got about one hour left before Alba gets home, and I need to prepare some dinner for her, so I need to start tidying up and get ready for that. But we pretty much did it. We've got half the floor done. We've got the bed stroke sofa frame in. Um, I managed to find this beautiful piece of wood here. We've got a nice new end, end panel here. The countertop has just been cut, so it needs to be sanded and cleaned down um, and cut exactly to size, but at least it's the countertop for the fridge is in. So the fridge is slotted in there, as we can see. It's going to have plenty of ventilation on each side and also on the top. Um, another bit of countertop, the same, same as this, is going to come along here for the windowsill um, to seal all of this out. If I get time, I just need to paint this piece in here white, um, sand down the areas where I filled in to put the plasterboard backing in on there. But it, it's starting to look good. The kitchen's half in, we've got a sink. The waste is fully working, but at the moment the drinking water tap and the normal tap is not not plumbed in yet. We're waiting on the tanks underneath. We've got the extractor fan that needs to go up up the top to suck the air out through this pipe to the outside. The light, all of this is going to be enclosed in a nice little nice little box. The gas in, switches for the, the lights on here, it's starting to come together. Another rewarding job was to paint the door pole from this horrible health and safety yellow to a nice fresh white. Before we started that, I also finished the flooring on the steps along with adding some LED lights. 
After a few more long days, we're starting to see the end in sight. The kitchen is almost complete and it's, everything is starting to come together. A day or two later and we are waiting on the new covers for the sofas, but the sofas are back in. The doors and handles for the kitchen have been fitted and the kitchen looks almost finished. We have to finish the ceiling at the front of the van and you can see here a little sneak preview of the projector screen before it's boxed in. We still need to put the tiles or metal splash back up here and finish the box around the extractor fan. The cupboards have been built opposite the kitchen and just need the doors painting and fitting along with the countertops that need to be cut and fitted. These cupboards here are for the bedding, towels, beach stuff and whatever else we can squeeze in. And here is where we will store 50 of the 75 litres of water for our normal water tap. We wanted these tanks to go under the van, but in the end it was just not achievable, so we had to sacrifice some storage inside the van. We've also finished the window frames. The idea is that there is a small gap between the wood and the window for the metal insulation to go. These stop the heat coming in from the sun in the summer, they stop the heat getting out at night in the winter, and also act as curtains, so they're kind of handy. One big job that somehow got left until the end is the back doors. So now we're insulating and putting the wood cladding on the back doors. We've also started to fit the odd shaped wood to the area above the seats at the front. Once this is done, it'll all be painted white. And that is where I'm gonna end this video as all that's left are the finishing touches. So make sure you check out my other videos to see the final result. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.